And then he decided to come back to Canada. And my wife was always wanting to open up a coffee shop. And then this place came up for out of nowhere and then we decided to take a shot and uh, gave it a go. And it's been six years. Everything was going very well. But all of a sudden with the COVID-19, all the lockdowns and restrictions, we got a bit, big hit. Big hit, yes. This is a crepe and waffle place, right? And uh, we kept, kept the main items, crepes and waffles, but we added a variety of it. And we also added a uh, friendship. And then we added a love to the menu. If you see it in the back of me, it says all the ingredients for one item, and then it says on top of it, we also add a love. Like, I don't want to do Turkish food, but I want to do a little bit of everything. So I want to do like a little bit of French, I want to do a little bit of Italian, I want to do a little bit of Belgian waffle, you know, I want to put a little bit of Italian gelato, Turkish coffee, espresso, you know, a little bit of everything. That's, that's what attracts people in here. That's truly Canadian. <clears throat> well, that's Canada, Canada, right? Yes, that's truly Canadian. In the sweets, it's Nutella strawberry banana cream. Oh, you can't, nothing goes wrong with it. <laughs> On a savory basis, Atlantic smoked salmon is a really good one. What's the secret? You got spice in it? Well, uh, there is not much a secret. It's as it, like, the biggest thing is love. I really do it with a passion. I was new to a business. I didn't know anything about business. Two years after that, the first three years, it was a smooth going. It was growing, 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 growing. And uh, we had, we won a couple of awards, like the best customer restaurant of the year, quick serve. We won the award the next year. I, I would say 50% of my customers, they're regulars now. And then a lot of them I invited to my house, you know, when they see us, like we hug each other. Like anything I need, anything they need, you know, we help each other, especially in this Canada area. It's a, such a phenomenal, community that like everybody helps each other and that really drive me forward to keep this business alive on Sunday average day between 9 to 1 we get about 200 250 people in here it's a lot yeah I used to have six people working in there this time this place would be packed lineups at the door lineups yes I can't stay home and get paid and I didn't want to get that government money because that's really limiting everything. I said, I'm going to keep it open. And by the time the customer you know, get to know that we're open and we're still serving, they keep supporting. They keep supporting. I've seen people walking, like getting into the, the knocking that door and like handing me a, like a envelope full of money. And then they were saying like, we used to spend this much money in this place, so now we can't come, but we know you need it. We ran, ran after them, like they said, this is what it is, you know, we want to support. We can't come in, obviously, but you still need it, you still be running. We want you to be here. Well, that's how important the small businesses are, it's not only me. From March 14, they officially closed the doors, it was 80% drop. Between March 1st and March 14, I'm just going to make the numbers, let's say I make 10 grand. From March 14 till the uh, end, end of the March, I made two or three grand. From August till September, it dropped at least 50%. We were about, from, compared to last year's about this month, we were about 50% down. Margins are really thin. Especially now with the uh, Skip the Dishes and Uber Eats, the margins are really, really, really tight. Most of the small businesses don't have deep pockets. They run on a daily basis. When you come in here on, a, let's say, Sunday morning, these COVID time, and you see all these plates packed, but that doesn't make me millionaire because those people are here only Sunday. But if it goes like this, six another six months, I don't think any of the small businesses would survive. I had to deliver a food to elderly couple in the back of the building. I guess she wasn't allowed to go out. 
she had an existing condition, so she's stuck at home. And I saw how she was appreciative when she saw me at the door. She wanted to give me a tip. I was like, no, I don't, I'm not here for a tip. All I'm here for, you're stuck, you can't get out, but you need something. I will bring it to you. You just be safe. But she insisted that I take that tip that she was, she, and she, she, she burst into tears just because I delivered that food. That's okay. I mean, it's, but that keeps my, it's a I want to be there. I want to be here. I am needed. So that's essential for some people at least. I'm not a hospital worker. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a doctor. But people need, need to communicate with others. I see people coming in, they're, they're talking like 10 minutes. Hey, I, you, you only bought a coffee. But she needed to talk because she can't talk to anybody. And I'm, I'm happy we did it, you know. It, did, it didn't make much of a profit for us, but that's okay. She's happy now, I'm happy. It's not only affecting us, it's affecting everybody, mentally. You know, one of my customers, for the probably once, you know, first time in the six months, she walked in, she saw this place empty, she burst into tears, and then she ran away. Her husband waited her, waited inside to get the food, and that's what frustrates me. Most what we're missing is the people because we want to say hi. The Canadian government did help, although the loans, the rent subsidies, weight subsidies, they did it. So they did quite a bit. But <clears throat> I want to be, you know, independent. I don't want to rely on government's help. I, I was doing it for the past six years on my own. I still want to do it on my own. I don't want any interference from the government. You know what I mean? So that's, that's my goal. Twelve sessions of chemo. I did it during the summer of 2019, so I wasn't here at all. There were six months later, it was a COVID hit. Um, we're getting tested, I guess, from the God. It's a big test. Are we going to be able to, you know, get hundred or fail? We don't know. We're still in it together, and then we will survive together, hopefully.